Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make an uh, LS1 camshaft lamp. And you don't have to use a LS1 camshaft, it's just the easiest that I've found, just because they are mostly hollow. But I know there's a lot of these around, and I kind of want to do something a little bit different with the explosion proof light. So if you want to see how I made it, stay tuned. So these are the pieces you're going to need to build your camshaft lamp, starting obviously with the camshaft. This is a LS1 camshaft out of a newer Camaro. Um, once you have the camshaft, you're going to need some type of a light. A lot of people just put like, um, they just go and buy like a run of the mill like lamp style fixture that you can buy at Home Depot and then just put a lampshade on it. I didn't really think that looked cool, so I ended up going with um, this explosion proof housing. You can find these all day on eBay. There's a lot of different styles. Some of them are newer. Uh, like this design is a little bit newer. Uh, there's a lot older designs too. And that came with this ceramic piece right there, that white piece. Uh, that's what the light bulb actually screws into. And then the whole thing mounts to just a standard electrical conduit. And then once you have your, your lamp part figured out, then you're gonna have to have a base. Uh, normally, you could probably just use a LS1 cam gear. That'd probably work good enough. Uh, they're actually pretty big. But in this case, the cam gear that he gave me is off of a small engine or something. I'm not sure. So I'm going to have to use this brake rotor here as the base so it's nice and secure. So it doesn't tip over and smash that housing. Other than that, you'll need a switch of some sort. I'm just using a cutoff switch right there. It's kind of hard to see, but you'll see it later. And then to attach the conduit to the top, I'm using just some standard like plumbing fittings. And then for the cord, I just bought a kind of cool looking extension cord. I'm just gonna cut it off and attach the leads. Then also the bulb that I'm using is a Edison style or vintage style as they label them as. You can see it there. I should give it a nice look. And then plus if um, later on the guy that I'm building this for, if he wants to dim it, you can just buy a dimmer. And these, light, these style bulbs look really cool with a, a dimmer attached to them. You can really see the filaments and everything. Okay, so those are the parts. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start with the base. And this is the standard import uh, brake rotor that I'm using for the base. Not too thick, um, just a good size for this kind of project. So because this gear is so small, I'm going to have to fill in these because I think it looks dumb. If I had this like that, you can still see all the holes. I don't know. I just don't like the way it looks. So I'm going to fill those in with uh, my MIG welder and then sand everything smooth and then get all the corrosion off too with a wire wheel. To make all this easier, I'm using a piece of brass, maybe copper, with a handle on it. I think I just got this at Harbor Freight. So this makes it a lot easier to fill in holes and everything. You could leave these open too. I'm just doing it because of the gear that I'm using doesn't cover these, so I think they look ugly. Now I'm just going to grind this down. Here's 
Here's a quick little shot of those all filled in. So when you're filling in holes, especially on thicker metal, you go till you think it's full when you're looking at it, and then you go another like two or three seconds after that. Um, that works best for me because I always find like if I look, if it looks full when I'm actually welding it, there's actually going to be like a little edge around it once I grind it down. So go till you think it's good, and then go a little bit more. Then you'll have pretty good results. So just gotta grind this down, and then I'll get the gear mounted. Okay, so what I did now was on the inside here, or underneath the rotor, um, that's the cam gear. I marked the center of it and lined everything up so the cam gear is in the center of the hat part of the rotor. Uh, I'm going to weld it from this side just so that you won't see any of the welds from the outside because I didn't really want to weld into the gear section, so I'm doing it this way. Should be plenty. There you see it. Now I just gotta weld the cam to that. Okay, so I got this all positioned on the cam gear after I welded the cam gear to the rotor. So now I'm just going to start attacking the cam, um, the cam gear. Time to it.
Okay, so there you have it, the cam's all welded. Yeah, normally if I, if I was welding this for structural, I would do the post flow and all that. Um, just because this is a lamp, I'm not really worried about it. So that's why you see all the discoloration for the most part. Um, I'm just stopping the post flow too soon. So all the oxygen is getting sucked in and doing all that. Here's a close up of the weld. As you can see a little bit better. Like I said, I mean, this is a lamp, so I'm just doing it quick and dirty. Still turned out pretty good, though. Okay, so this is how I'm going to attach the top part of the lamp. Uh, this is just a uh, cast iron, I believe, um, pipe fitting. I'm not sure how this is going to weld. I'm going to try regular um, ER70S first um, welding rod, and then if that doesn't work, I'm probably going to try a silicon bronze. But we'll try with this first and see, see if I can even tack it. actually seems to weld pretty good. I did sand this down first with a flap wheel, so that might have something to do with it. It's definitely dirty, but it looks like it's weldable. not really a good way to hold this when I'm trying to attack it, so it wants to move a lot. Let's see if I can get another tag that works a little better. I think I'm going to go ahead and just use silicon bronze because this is cast iron, I believe, because it's starting to crack a little bit in some of the spots, so silicon bronze would be a better choice. It's a little more uh, ductile.
good. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Um, this stuff's super dirty, so it kept splotching back, getting on my tungsten. That's why I was flicking it. Uh, if you get it hot enough, you can just flick the tungsten and it will pop off um, all the grime and shit that's on there. Get this cleaned up and move on to the next part. Okay, so now uh, I have an electrical box that I put on this pipe here. Now I just have to tack it together. So some of the connectors on this are um, electrical connectors and conduit, and then this is obviously that plumbing piece. So I just like the way um, this piece looked better than the electrical conduit, so that's why I went with that. And then to get everything to, to made up, I used uh, conduit pieces. So you'll just kind of have to play around with all the different um, connectors and pieces till you find something that you like. this off but yeah it's all tacked right now and I'm gonna take it off and finish weld it okay now I'm going to make a mount for this switch right here just an on and off switch I want to sit right here so what I'm going to do is uh, take this washer that I already drilled to the right size and then just weld that here. That way it's nice and steady. Um, these were a little bit too small to drill into so I just pulled the middle one out. Your box might be different but these switches all kind of mount the same. You might just be able to drill a hole instead of having to weld the washer on.
Next, I just gotta paint everything and put it together. Okay, so I threw a quick uh, coat of paint on everything, mainly just this part and the top part. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but the base too I painted. Um, then I ran the wire through. One thing I needed to mention too, um, in the middle of the LS1 camshafts, there's a solid part. There's a hole that goes from here to here, and then from here to here, but there's a little section in the middle that's uh, solid. So you have to go get a long, I think it's like a 12 inch, three eighths drill bit, and just drill through that center section. This is super soft, so it was really easy to cut through. It only took like two minutes. So after you do that, you can run the wire through. Like I said, I just used the extension cord. Now I'm just separating the, the two sides so I can hook up the switch. And I'll show you how that all goes together. Okay, here's a brief explanation of the wiring. So when you get your explosion proof light, it will come with a ceramic style um, bulb holder. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's pretty easy. Just two leads. As long as you're using a two wire cord, it doesn't matter which lead you go on. And then I'm just using a cutoff switch in between. This is made for 110 voltage AC current. It's not meant for DC, so it should be fine. And it's rated at a lot higher than this um, bulb will actually draw. So I already tested it and made sure it worked, but I'll just show you guys. It's on the on position right now. There you go. Pretty simple. Okay, as you guys can see, it's all done. Everything went together good. It's all working, turns on and off. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So as you guys saw, I kind of did things a little bit differently. Um, normally most people would just take a light socket, put it on top, and then put a shade. And I just think it was kind of dumb. So I did it my way um, with this really cool explosion proof light. And this kind of like sets the, the plans for you to make almost anything. I mean, there's all kinds of cool lights out there. You could even use automotive lights possibly. So I just kind of did it a little bit differently and I'm kind of anxious to see what you guys come up with. So if you want to see the step-by-step -step pictures of this, you can check out Instagram. It's um, Nate underscore Mainville. And then you can see this, the step-by-step -step pictures. Also, I really want to see what you guys come up with too. So if you want to send me pictures of what you guys end up making, let me know what you think.